All right. I think with that, we are going to end the news section and move on to the gaming section here. He already played right. Pavlov. You've obviously already played Pavlov. Anyone who's Have listening knows that well? those two played. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, cool. So it's just Jay and us who finally... I'd played Pavlov before, but not... I, I never owned it. So this was my first time owning and playing it, like giving it some proper attention. Um, it'd also been forever since I'd last played it. Jay, this was like your true first time, right? This was my first time experience. And not only that, but I'm still, as most of you know, very new to the the like intense military sim type first person shooter VR games. Because on PSVR, we didn't have many. And on PC, I had only just finally tried War Dust and Contractors. Now, Pavlov, I I got to say, so as someone who has been, I've spent most of my life in Oregon and I have friends here who have lots of guns. I've gotten to shoot a lot of guns in real life. And Pavlov kind of frustrated me personally because I've my friends, I've gotten to shoot an M4, an M16, and a Kalashnikov, which is basically like an AK. And what people don't realize, and I think, I don't know if the developers have shot these guns. These guns are meant to be precision rifles that are held fired precisely and don't have much recoil because you need you're needing to be able to continually fire more shots if you're in a combat situation i felt like i was shooting a 12 gauge shotgun with every gun i was <laughs> shooting in pavlov like I, I was holding the front of it i'd shoot 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 and in three shots i was at 45 degrees above my target that Absolutely. was that was just the weirdest thing to me especially after i just played a bunch of contractors which doesn't tend to do that it made it a bit more of a frustrating experience than i expected because every video i've seen it's just so fun and i was in there just struggling my way through i finally started shooting from the hip and i actually was getting way more kills shooting from the hip than trying to use the sights in that game so that threw me all off right i i was in a very very i think you'll this makes me kind of really want you to try onward now because i think onward is <laughs> the best job oh yeah of, you it, haven't um i haven't yeah um i think onward does the best job of giving a more quote realistic expression of what recoil is like you know it's jumpy i mean you can't like shoot anything at a really far range with recoil sure but you can certainly hit targets close whereas in pavlov like you like it is frustrating that if I'm going fully automatic, it only takes one or two full seconds before my left hand, which is like what was gripping the front of the gun, has been pulling down on recoil so much that I have it like down at my knee. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right. <laughs> By the time I'm done emptying a mag. No, that's not okay. That's not how guns work. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, frustrating. <laughs> it uh, the, 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 and people take like a while. There's, it's supposed to be one shot headshot, but most people buy armor, so it ends up being two shot headshot, which was frustrating already. <laughs> people took a lot of shots to the body. To me, the entire f experience felt like I was shooting ridiculous rubber guns at rubber people. That's that's that was how I felt playing it. It was weird. I didn't like it. I didn't like it as much I as I thought I would, especially having similarly seen gameplay. It was like, okay, I'm expecting Counter Strike in VR, but it. I prefer Counter Strike. <laughs> Usually, I prefer VR versions of yeah. games. So this was like I, I'm sorry, Destiny, but I, I wasn't crazy about it. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. That's that's tough to hear. I'm just playing, but but no. She spent me, the entire time running around with a knife, so she doesn't get the same. <laughs> much. You know what? <laughs> I was wondering if that was going to come up. That was totally worth it, by the way. Well, actually, not really, because I didn't get to stab anybody. It's going to happen one day. I've yet to right. use the knife. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. for me, that was actually, it was the first as far as playing it with the link, like playing it through Steam. And um, and I was pretty happy with it. Like, I was impressed. Like, it wasn't glitchy. It ran really smooth. Everything was really nice. Um, there was a few differences as far as, like, the workshop. I haven't really got to experiment with that too much and, like, at all the other custom maps. My biggest issue I noticed while playing with the link is the mic. I still have yet to figure that out. And I don't really know a lot of people that played Pavlov through the link. So if anybody knows, I know when it first got released um, or when the link first came out and you could play Pavlov that way, the mic was disabled. And I don't know if it was like temporary for like an update they were doing or if it's 
you know, if that's still why it's not working. But if anybody knows why the mic would not be working, but it works on all the other Steam games I play, like, let us know in the comments or something. But other than that, like, I had a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. If you really want to get that to work, I'd probably be down to spend some time troubleshooting with you. I was admittedly a little focused on just trying to figure out how to shoot the darn guns so i <laughs> right? wasn't well, spending I too even, much time it well because like in the quest you don't have to do anything at all without using the link like it just works right. and then um so with the link i assumed it would do the same thing and i actually even reached out to the people within the pavlov discord and i still didn't really get a lot of helpful feedback so fortunate yeah so um I don't, I don't really know. Like I said, other than that, though, I definitely recommend getting it for or through the Steam as well. It was worth it mm -hmm. just for the extra content that you can play. Yeah, a lot of modding, a yeah. bigger player base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would definitely. If if you like Pavlov for some oh. reason, <laughs> uh, <laughs> then, then yeah, uh, yeah uh, definitely for those that are like, I'm stuck on my quest. Is it worth actually you know what let me get, let me put the set question to you so if you for all those uh uh quest users that are like i kind of want to like play the bigger better version of pavlov is the upgrade to a link worth say purchasing a link cable or even more is it worth like investing into a gaming computer to, like how much better is it Oh, for sure. Well, I mean, especially for people who already have a gaming computer, then absolutely, even if it's not just for Pavlov, even if it's for any of the Steam games, that should be one of the first things that you get. Like, I wish I would have been able to have the link when I first got my headset, but obviously, you know, it's a newer release. But um, yeah, it, they definitely should get the link. And if you don't have a gaming PC, I that's a good one. I don't really know if it's worth investing as far as the games that you could be able to play, because I see, especially actually this past week with all these um, other new games that are coming to the quest there for a while, it was kind of stagnant, but now there's a lot of new games coming. So mm -hmm. I almost would say, unless you just absolutely want one and you have the money to spend to go out and get one, get it. If not, then I don't think so. I think you're fine with your quest alone, and I would just kind of hold tight and see all the new content that's coming out this year. Right after you, after Rip after Rip said that super condescending sentence about if you like Pavlov, <laughs> I just have to say I feel a little guilty. I feel like I trashed it pretty hard. If I think I went into it with the wrong mindset, so let's let's hear from Will and Destiny, who hopefully think better of the game. Was I just expecting it to be too real? Was I thinking this was going to be a different experience, and that's what ruined the game for me? Would it have been fun if I went in with no expectations? I think so. Like I honestly, I think it's a hilarious game. Maybe it's because I've seen so many funny videos come from that game that it is hard for me to take it like hardcore serious like i do go in there just to have fun like i'm definitely not gonna say that i am a really good pavlov player like i'm a pretty decent csgo player pavlov i can try but it's definitely more for just you know to have fun to goof around mm -hmm. what about you will uh i honestly haven't played pavlov in like two years so i was just listening this whole time but <laughs> oh, i remember no. when i did i just kind of went in there to goof off like i wasn't expecting like a an onward or firewall i just wanted right, to run around yeah. and shoot people respawn instantly and yeah, it's fun. just mess around so yeah well and it's have like you played contractors have... sorry oh you're fine oh i have Will? contractors but i just haven't put the time into it yet Oh, yeah. we have to try it. What were you going to say, Destiny? I think compared to the other games like Onward, I don't really know if um, with all the maps that it offers or all the game modes, but I know with like Pavlov, especially the Triple T game mode, it's almost like it just kind of sets itself up to be more fun and goofy. Because like in that game mode, the first time I played it, everybody wanted to line up and play Simon Says and uh, <laughs> like with a revolver and everything and they'll do like Russian roulette like it's 
it's just so different. And I think that's one of the things that kind of caught me off guard when I did finally get to try Onward with y'all is that it was a fun game, but it's so much more serious. Like it's, it is very, very different. I thought they were going to be a lot more similar, but, but I did, I love Onward. So it's, it's a good game too. Maybe you should uh, uh, play some more of it. I will, yeah. That's something that we're definitely going to have to jump back into. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what you guys are saying, that we okay, I think we went into the wrong game mode was really the problem. We went into like deathmatch. We had like these serious other players. So maybe maybe next time, I'll give it another chance, but I think maybe next time we go yeah. into one of these other more lighthearted modes and try that first because I went in ready for like a sim shooter serious game and I felt like the controls weren't that and yet the other people were that and I was just getting killed and I was even though I was shooting them, nothing was happening. So so I, I see why I have such a bad taste in my mouth, but I'm I'm ready to correct it and give it one more shot. So yeah, thanks. we definitely should. And I mean, at the same time, like I will say there are very serious players who have tons of hours that they've put into the game. And there is a league, a competitive league for Pavlov. And mm-hmm. so, you know, it's for some people it is fun, I would say. But yeah, for others, and, and it has been around for a while, especially for the quest, I want to say... I could be wrong, but I want to say it's one of the uh, first FPS, like true FPS games to come out for it. So, I mean, I mm-hmm. definitely got to give it credit there. All right. Okay. Well, you should still play more Onward. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. And maybe, uh, and maybe uh, Jay and I will have to give Pavlov a bit of a try. Tr- Trouble in Terrace Town and some of those um, more lighthearted sort of fun goof around modes. You know, the other games don't have a lot of that. Contractors are starting to get that. But um, I think that might be the 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 fun to be had that I haven't had yet in yes. Pavlov. Let's yeah. try that too. <laughs> All right, fellas. I want to tell you about this wonderful game I discovered that I... Well, okay, that's not true. I played it before, but not in VR. That is No Man's Sky. Has, have you guys played No Man's Sky in mm. VR specifically? Yes. Yes, from Jay? No, well, I watched the trailer for it. Yes, I've played a lot. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So, this was my first time. I liked it with an asterisk. <laughs> um, it's, uh... Okay, so, for those that aren't familiar, for some reason, you haven't heard of No Man's Sky, despite all the controversy. No Man's Sky is a crazy ambitious game where these people created a very small team of people created a game where you are a guy in space and you can explore a world with gazillions and gazillions of planets all the planets are real planet-sized planets and they're all procedurally generated actually is that true well they're procedurally generated initially that's like how they were created but everyone has the same exact procedurally generated world so it's it's like you, everyone can visit the same planets and make the same discoveries and over time it, it launched without a lot of the features that we were told it would have so it had a lot of backlash when it came out but hello games the maker of no man's sky really put a ton of effort into making this game what they said it would be we've got multiplayer we've got base building we've got all sorts of new land vehicles we have mechs now we have carriers the amount of work that they put into this game to make it more than just walking around on a planet trying to, I don't know, burn enough plants to keep your ship running. (laughs) (laughs) That's kind of the original gameplay loop. Um, They've come a long way from that. And in terms of that, I was super, super happy. So I played this game when it came out, and then I played it when I think the No Man's Sky Next update came out. I played it it right after Carriers came out. Um, which was a big update, but it, it, it's now a little bit dated in terms of the amount of updates they've had. So for all those people that are, they purchased No Man's Sky forever ago and they haven't picked it up, it's collecting dust, it's maybe even in a trash bin somewhere, I'd recommend trying it again. The amount of content there now, oh my goodness. Like, they, I mean, I, I hear a lot of people still get burned out once they get to the end of all the new content, but for a new player... You easily get your money's worth now. It's got a lot to do. It's super fun. It looks very pretty. VR was a little so-so, though. Um, the controls were kind of weird. I 
am a pretty heavy VR user in this game. I didn't get motion sickness, but I got a ton of eye strain. And I think it has to do with the anti-aliasing in the game or the lack thereof. Um, and it, I don't know. It was like really hard to look at stuff and it wasn't just me. Uh, uh, our, um, I, I never know like what to call him in terms of relation to the podcast. Our co-producer or I don't know. Excuse me. Some guy. <laughs> some some guy that helps us with stuff. Don't worry about him. Yeah, d- yeah, don't worry about him. Uh, <laughs> he he, <laughs> he uh he was playing with me and we both have the same like it wasn't just me, but the, we we both have this issue with the with No Man's Sky of getting headaches when we play it. So you know, this is a VR podcast, so that's what matters for me here. It's playable and I intend to jump back in in vr because it's still a lot of fun and it's super cool to see all these crazy things in vr it could still use some work though there's some weird control decisions you can't choose if your movement is head based as opposed to controller based um fortunately you could at least switch away from teleporting i was worried that they didn't have that for a second um but there's a lot of like the controls are a little weird. Maybe they've just done the best they can with controls because it's they, there's a lot to do in that game and you're doing a lot of different activities. So I understand the challenge, but I feel like there are some small quality of life quality of life improvements they could have made, especially when it concerns some of the like button mapping. I would like to remap my buttons, please and thank you. Um, I suppose I could have done that in Steam, but that's yeah. I don't want to have to do that. Controller bindings now. If it's going to be in game, it should be in game. Controller bindings yeah. are too much of a pain in the butt to deal with. Exactly, yeah. especially on Steam. Um, I think the, yeah. the only logical explanation here is that it's just better on PSVR. Yeah. Ah, there it is. <laughs> no issues on PSVR. Literally perfect. <laughs> literally perfect. <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely not. It's definitely not going to be as impressive visually, but. Everything on mm. there worked really well for me. Uh, well, maybe that's why my eye strain was so bad because it was built for PSVR, and I just can't stand that kind of thing. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> <laughs> I've been I so also... used to my wonderful land of PC VR that I, having to gaze upon the world of PlayStation VR again just gave me a headache, to be honest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love all you guys. All you love all your PlayStation VR users. I, we're joking here. We're joking here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So what? If, so what did you? So you guys didn't just play it this week, but what did you guys think of PlayStation? Not PlayStation. Uh, shoot, No Man's Sky VR. So I started playing it on PlayStation VR first because I wanted to wanted to see the experience without going straight to PC. And even on PlayStation VR, it blew me away. The minute you finally get your ship up and running, you get in the ship and you blast off into space. Yes, the motion controls, no matter what platform you are, are a little weird trying to fly your ship. I will give it that. But hitting into space and seeing the stars, everything, it was like, I was like laughing because I thought I was going to cry. It was really cool. (laughs) You step it up to PC and it's just that much more crisp, that much more clear. And it's really enveloping. It just feels like you're on these alien worlds. It's really good. The gameplay mechanics, I mean, it takes you through this long tutorial and you like you have to build a base, you have to do these other things. And that that can feel a little like it's dragging on, I felt like. But it's so worth it. Every time you blast off into space, every time you hang out with your friends and you're goofing around, oh, it is so just, good. it is so good. Multiplayer is a little funny, though. Like, it took us, like, a while to get multiplayer working because it's finicky as hell. PSVR didn't do that at all. What did you think, Will? No, that that definitely happened for me. I remember there were times where we went like an hour and a half just trying to figure out what in the world was going on. We were just trying to join each other. And then it's like, oh, I'm in. Are you you in? He's like, oh, I see you. I'm (laughs) like, what? What are you talking about? I'm right in front of you, dude. (laughs) Yeah, we had the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So nothing's changed. (laughs) Sadly. And I don't know how it is on PlayStation VR, but on, uh, on computer to add someone as a fortunately the steam allowed you to do like join game which was how we got it to work in the end but you can add friends but to do but to add friends you need to add their friend code and Ooh. for for goodness sake 
no one should ever try to emulate Nintendo when it comes to a social <laughs> network. Bad on you, <laughs> Hello Games. <laughs> it's lazy, and it's awful. <laughs> also, you can't access any options from the main menu. The they're on there. I should have been able to hold a button to reset my center of vision because that was a little weird and funny. Um, what, what was PlayStation always has that button? I've gone on about other like, podcasts. Oh yeah, that's right. But they yeah. always have that button in every game, and every headset should have that button that always just resets you. Well, that was the thing is um, resetting the view in either Steam or Oculus didn't affect it. It didn't do anything. It was you had to it was awkward as hell. You had to pull up your menu, go to the controls or or just go to settings. Then there's a button to recenter your view. But the thing is, it's not like it's not like a lot of other stuff where you, you click that button and then you like get yourself situated and then you press, I don't know, trigger or something to have it settle <laughs> the moment you press that recenter hud or recenter view it recenters it and i didn't yeah, realize that like at first sitting and aiming off to yeah, the side yeah exactly <laughs> and like no one likes to look away from the center of view in a vr headset they're not really built all that well for it so this option on the menu that is off to the right you have to you have to like kind of like sit straight up right you want to you want to get like exactly the view you want looking straight ahead and then look out of the corner of your eye and try and point at it. <laughs> <laughs> Click reset. <laughs> Good. Uh, did you did you ever play your game? <laughs> Hello games. <laughs> it's pretty clear that a lot of the stuff transferred over from PlayStation VR. And no offense to PlayStation VR, but you guys lack joysticks. And gosh darn it, we've got joysticks now on play on PC. Take advantage of them. Why do I still have to use weird controls? And your game, Hello Games. All right, we have perfectly good joysticks. Let's use those. I blame the Vive because they didn't have me either. Oh yeah, and Vive doesn't have it either. Speaking of, speaking of HEC messing up, that was in the news section for those that are watching on YouTube and are just now only re- only watching the game section. Watched our previous YouTube video about uh, the HTC Vive's suite to know what we're talking about. <laughs> Nailed it. links in the description um (laughs) all right Uh, we spent a while on that uh you played tower tag destiny i just now noticed this (laughs) yes (laughs) yes i finally did jake convinced me that it was necessary tell do tell okay so you're gonna think i'm crazy but i actually kind of dug it it was very different it was very fun but this is the no thing taste. i 100 <laughs> no I, yes apparently but i will say it is not the kind of game that i would play at home by myself it absolutely is like a huge like a like an arena type game like that's why like i play think an of. arcade sort of thing yes yeah like it yeah. would be so good for that like as far as the visuals the music the interaction everything it was so arcade like and right. um so if they want to gear it more towards like the uh larger like area play games like that then great but i so i will agree at home though just by yourself probably not the best game like i probably won't be playing it again and um and in the game that i got in there literally wasn't even anybody else i couldn't even find another game like i had to be against a bot so um see at that even there's bots were there bots yeah i played them while i was waiting for you to get in they're (laughs) rude (laughs) yeah it was it was horrible i just had the one single bot i was playing against but um (laughs) But so I guess like when y'all were talking about it, I was expecting something even like visually a little bit worse, but it wasn't too bad. No, it's not too bad visually. Yeah. I I, I hope we didn't roast them too much on that aspect. Uh, Visually, it was fine. We said the visuals were nice, but we said that it was just, I mean, it was kind of dull. Like the the graphics looked good, but it wasn't very diverse environments is mostly a dark arena well do you have any Just have the, you seen anything about this game i am looking about? at the steam page right now okay. never heard of this 
Well, on last week's podcast, I ripped this game to pieces. Live, oh, yeah, live yeah. Mixed Reality <laughs> gave away a ton funny. of codes. We got free codes to play it, and it was just... It's this It's this tower tag. It's what's called use one freaking controller. You don't use two. Use one. You only have two buttons that you're going to use. Your shooting trigger and your teleport button is basically what it is. And you try and hide behind this little tower and shoot other people and take the towers. And that's the entire depth of the game. Right there. <laughs> $20. So, so now for Destiny to come and say it was kind of fun or anything, I, I'm... I don't know. Fun, fun you have low standards for VR, game. I think. You <laughs> no, need to... I could just, <laughs> I could see it, like, said from a different perspective. Like, at home, I, especially for that price, like, I would definitely not go out and purchase it. But for people who are new to VR, like, it was just such a very simple, easy game to get into that still kind of gives you that, you know, that 360 experience. Because I don't know, mm-hmm. if, maybe if they have different maps, but the one that I was in, there was like icebergs and like different, like, it had to, I don't know, the visuals were a little bit better. You were creating the game I sessions. I don't I'm know blaming this all on, on you. There was, there was like, like no ice. arenas. I don't know. Maybe it got an it update like... after day one, but I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm looking at <laughs> there. I tried like... everything I could find in that game, and it was all just dark, boring arenas. Yeah. Really? See, yeah, that's where I was a little bit confused. I don't know. Um, Are you sure you played Tower Tag? Did you play a different oh, game? Oh, yeah. Was it only yeah, one it controller in the game that you played? It was played? actually Pop Lock. Yes. Okay, and no, I forgot I wanted to mention this. My favorite part, and this is definitely such like a girl thing to say, it was really cute, but on the gun, I don't know if y'all noticed, but it has like your name. I guess it's like your uh-huh. Steam ID. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So you have like this cool like little laser gun in your hand that like has your name on it. And so it's very like specialized. But yeah, that's just like a small little detail. <laughs> <laughs> Why would that be only a girl thing? <laughs> You thought it was cool? You like that? It's like laser I am. As a guy, I don't like any amount of personalization. That's just. I don't know. I thought that was to... for the girls. Cause, cause developers, like, if you want to easily impress people, put their put their names in the oh, game yes, somewhere. Yes. That's, yeah, totally I, I love points that. for this. That I didn't notice that. The first thing I noticed it, like I saw it and I was like, "Oh, that is so cool. That is so cute." I probably and I was would like, have thought that was neat. Okay, then yeah. then see, yeah, they should definitely include that more people like that <laughs> <laughs> yes i want my names on my arms on my guns on, on my head no, exactly like you want people to know beat like, saber yes i want i want my name on my your sabers stuff. yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> that'd be kind of cool actually i know right good idea they need to come up with that next mod good job will yeah <laughs> tell 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 all those people that make all the beat saber mods give them give them a little bit of feedback <laughs> yeah, on my name on my sabers <laughs> But like in that like elven rune language that like the Hobbit uses, or not not the Hobbit, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> Just did encode. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I. So for those that aren't really getting what she means by arcade, this game originally came out, um, not for consumer use. It was in VR arcades, like real life arcades that had VR. Um, so people would be able to show up. They had larger play spaces. So you would be able basically when you're playing this game, you're on a tower and you're you have this pole in the center and that's your only cover and you can move around this pole and on like in like a little area. And when you're at home, you can't move around this tower in any way except for with your own real life feet. So if you have a pole, uh, excuse me, if you have a small play space, this thing's like nearly impossible to play. Um and so I th- when you're at, at an arcade and this is like the first game you've played, it's got to like, it's only got one controller. It's only got two controller inputs and it makes a lot of sense in that scenario. And I think that's what she's saying. Yeah. That for yeah, those that for were sure. confused and need some catching up. <sighs> All right, Jay. Uh, so on to something totally outside of the realm of actual games. I tried something today. A developer sent me a code. They said, Hey, Mr. Brat, this is coming out tomorrow. Do you want to try this? It's called V rocker. So like VR and the word rocker, you slap them together. Uh, for those of you who actually follow my channel or are part of my community, you'll know if someone says what the J brat wiggle is, well knows what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Apparently when I am in rec room and I'm playing 
capture the flag and I get the flag and I'm really into it. For some reason, I don't know if it's to not get shot or something. I do this weird thing as I'm running across the map where I like move side to side. Maybe that's why I get so many <laughs> flags because no one can shoot me because I'm doing this. Well, imagine any game, VR game you want to play, just doing that in real life will now move your character inside of the game for you. So this is a plugin similar to like turn signal that we've talked about before. So like this plugs into VR games. And now if you want to have locomotion, instead of using your joystick or whatever you're using, you can use this side to side motion. You can actually run in place, whatever, whatever kind of movement you do basically programs it to move you in the game world instead. Oh. So it's like the super poor version of a VR treadmill is what this thing is. Now I feel like in my explaining of it, I'm making it sound a lot simpler and like it works a lot better than it does. It is coming out, but it's coming out in early access. It's, it's not there yet. I could see the value in it. If you're wanting to just subsidize your gameplay and like add some exercise to it, this I truly don't think no matter how well the developer does, for you, I truly don't think this will ever fully replace locomotion in any game. But for a game mm -hmm. like No Man's Sky, if like during those parts where you're running across the map to another part, you wanted to like, oh, OK, I'll use this mode real quick where I can actually get some physical activity and run. Great. Would you ever be able to play a game like Pavlov intensely and competitively with this? Absolutely not. That being said, they've done a lot of work. It does kind of work. The thing that bugged the crap out of me, though, was so how it works. If you want to activate it, you need to do something to activate it. So to activate oh. this thing to start, you will either hold your right stick any direction. doesn't matter. You just hold your right stick and suddenly it activates. And then now if it senses your headset moving intensely, it'll start to move you forward. And when I say forward, I mean, whichever way your left freaking hand is facing, not which oh, way no. your head oh, is facing. No. So that, it was so disorienting to try and figure this thing out. And there's all these settings. It looks like a developer tool. It's not super user friendly to anyone. Uh, so you're tweaking all these settings and I, there will be a video on my channel by the time this drops in the podcast. So if you're really curious about it, check it out. Cause in there, I talked about it. I was giving the developer feedback. Like the problem is they, they had all these slides that told you how this works and how this works and how this works. And then like six slides in, it's like, okay, now try it. It's like, okay. I even told the developer this day, you should have one slide and then make me get to another part of the map using this to figure out how that thing worked that you just told me and then bring up another slide. Right. Because I did all this reading and I was so lost by the time I got there. The other problem, too, at the end of it lets you play this little mini game where you use this basically to run around and shoot these little stuffed animal creatures that are chasing you. And in practice and in playing and shooting things, it was way more fun than any part of this this intro that I had almost quit during. So if you would kind of if they would kind of include that, like, OK, go shoot this guy over here and then read the next slide. And it would have been a more fun experience to learn. And I would probably be a bit more sold on it. But. It's definitely not, it's not going to replace locomotion anything. It won't become the new platform. But if you're trying to get some exercise while playing these games like Skyrim or No Man's Sky, you're playing for hours on end, this could be a viable solution. The problem is it has to be mapped to somewhere on your controllers to activate it. And so you might lose something by setting it to a certain button. You might lose that button. So mm -hmm. that's, you guys have probably seen some other things that have kind of tried this. People trying to figure out locomotion. I've seen uh, games do similar yep. stuff. We talked about that a little last week, I think. Like Which never few works yep. and i hate it this. i would never download a plugin so that i get the wonderful experience of having to do that <laughs> <laughs> well let's say you were someone that's trying to get a little exercise in your gaming session maybe it could be worth it for those those intense games yeah. but it's yeah or if it doesn't make motion sick although i will tell you i was so disoriented i don't ever get motion sick and i came out of this feeling really weird because yeah. i was like so disoriented from trying to figure this movement style out Makes, Practice, me think, maybe? makes me think of the 3D router, huh, Will? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I couldn't see anyone using this for more than a few minutes at a time. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. what is that name? Rocker? What? V-Rocker. V-Rocker. I, 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 when I, I first like, heard oh, that... Be careful YouTubing it. <laughs> <laughs> when I first heard that, I thought it, you meant like like you would have for example like you would you would set the center and then you would like lean in a direction and leaning in a direction would like make you move that way that's what i thought you were saying at first oh man no yeah, that would that sure would be either. weird too let's just that would be weird go. too that yeah i was like trying to imagine like i feel like i'd be constantly moving without meaning to well that's the thing as long as you're not touching whatever button is activates this you won't move but if you right. are then you will and i had to turn the sensitivity way up to get it to really feel right but then the problem was if i still was holding that button or if i was still holding that stick and i moved to like 
swing a sword or something, it would then move my body. So you like had to consciously let go of this button that was activating this mode. Right. So it it definitely it needs to be worked on. And I don't know. I feel like they're kind of making something that no one's asking for, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So I doubt it'll have a huge life. Mm -hmm. So good luck to them. Got to work out some kinks. It feels like. Yeah. Majorly. Um, That talking about uh really weird and awful experiences will what have what have you been playing this week i was about to say it only gets worse uh oh, no. i recently played a psvr game called good dog bad dog vr so... is a really fun guys for all of you that uh are like oh, do i want to get into vr let me listen to this podcast and everyone's like man these games suck <laughs> It was it was all I played. I didn't know what else to say. It's just a bad week, guys. It's just yeah, a bad week. It was not good. Uh so the goal of Good Dog Bad Dog is it just kind of puts you into the sandbox area where you get to choose your dog and then you're in the first person view. It's kind of cute. You can see like your your snout in front of you. I'm like, okay, oh, you play as the dog. But yeah, you're literally the dog. Oh. <laughs> Like, this could be fun in a stupid way. I love being stupid okay. in VR. Um, and it's just, they set up this karma system. So the whole game is, like the title states, you can be a good dog or a bad dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, every 15 minutes, the timer resets. So you're trying to get as good or bad as you can within the time limit. And uh, I have no idea why they set it to a time limit. It's not like, you know, I'm going to be replaying every day like, oh, I'm going to beat my good dog score. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> uh, yeah, so, basically, so ridiculous. <laughs> I tried to see how far I could push this thing. Like, who wants to be a good dog? I want to be the worst dog on planet Earth. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I went out on the streets. I ran off my leash. I bit some kids. <laughs> I, oh, no. I ran away from the pound, the dog catcher guy. I I ignored the owner. I peed on the carpet. I did literally everything <laughs> I could. And the owner's just like, oh, good doggy. Oh, come here. What? I'm like, what? I did all that and nothing changed. So this whole karma system that the game set up, it affects nothing. It's just, just points. It's an endless cycle. You wake it's up one day, it. come get some food, drink some water. I'm like, okay, go play ball. You're playing ball like it's like a five minute game of ball. You're just going back and forth <laughs> until you eventually get so bored that you just leave. Sounds and... like, like someone with like a fetish for being a good dog. I think we're missing the big picture here is what's actually what's happening. The big picture? I think this game is explaining to us a euphemism of what the life of a dog is all like. You can wake up one day and you can be good all day and your owner's going to say, hey, you're a good dog. You can wake up the next day and be the worst dog ever. And what happens when I go to someone's house and their dog's peeing all over the place? What do I see them tell their dog? You're such a good dog. It doesn't matter how you act as a dog. This game is teaching us a lesson about how we treat our dogs. <laughs> if you want your dog to be a good dog, reward them. If you don't want to be a bad dog, don't still tell them they're a good boy. See, I get see if I'm going to look for like a deeper message, the deeper message I feel like I would see is like, do you realize how boring your dog's life is when they're trying to be good? <laughs> do, would you want to play dog treat. fetch for five minutes? <laughs> yeah. I respect that, but you're completely wrong. Well, go on. <laughs> uh, my, yeah, it's just nothing that you do changes anything. Uh, you bite some kids, they're like, ah, and then they return to their normal walking animation like two <laughs> seconds later. And then you go, the owner, you can't even mess with the owner's life because everything they do in their life consists of, you know, taking care of their dog. So they never go take a shower. They never never go to sleep. They are just helping you nonstop. Like, come play fetch, go on a walk. <laughs> their life revolves around the dog. And you can't bite your owner. Your your owner's immortal, by the way. Nothing you can do. Can, right. You know, I wanted to kill my owner. I was a bad dog. Walk him out into traffic. You no. Know, yeah, n- nothing. Nothing. There wasn't any well, cars. There wasn't even any cars. They were all parked. I couldn't hear anything parking. in it. Yeah. <laughs> It was no dogs, to, no cars to chase. There's like two songs in the game, so that just increases your madness because you're um, hearing the same loop. You're like, yeah, I don't want to be a dog. It's like, <laughs> no, <laughs> yep. This is it's twenty five dollars too. Twenty five dollars. Yeah, what? Twenty five. I oh talked to a gosh. guy and I was like, dude, you got to lower that price. It's got to be like five dollars <laughs> to even be on right, sales. Right. And he's like. 
well, even if you lower the price, that's just, it's already appealing to a niche audience, you know, dog owners who want to see what their right. dog's life is like. I'm like, dude, you know how many people, I didn't say this to him, but I was like, you know how many people just want to mess around as a dog in a sandbox? It's not just dog owners. Like, anyone I feel like would you should have said that to him. Yeah. No, I didn't. He seemed to be, yep. He, yeah. <sighs> Yeah, I'll just yeah. I'll just stop there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, has the developer ever seen Untitled Goose Game or Goat Simulator or any of those? The fun animal games are the ones you mess around in. Yeah. Come on now. This Especially is well established. In Especially yeah. in VR. Especially in VR. Yeah, when, when someone's in VR, the first thing they do when they come across the person, they try to slap them in the face to see what happens. <laughs> people are, people are a, a malevolent bunch in VR. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. Isn't there a cat game where you play as like the stray cat? Yeah, it sounds ex- a lot like what you're talking about. There's a I couple of cat games yeah, in there. Definitely, <laughs> they're they're all just fantastic. You should go play Cat oh, Lateral really? Damage Destiny. It is just it's a whole new experience. Look, it I'm going to send you a link to the trailer to it after this for Cat Lateral Damage, just so you can see the glory that it is actually this game. has you crawling. On okay, the floor. yeah, let me know what. It has you crawling on the floor like a cat. Yeah. I tried it. <laughs> All right. uh, yeah, apparently, I got a thing for these cat games, but I was like, with the move controllers, you know, the, like the balls on top. Uh, every time I needed to hit something, I would always just hit the floor, <laughs> push against it. I couldn't. The floor was too low for me to hit anything. Oh, this is so the cat game or the dog game? My controllers. The cat game. Oh, this is the cat game. Okay. This one actually has your hands in the game, and you're doing. Everything I couldn't play for more than five minutes. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah, I've never this one I meant by I play everything. I literally play everything. Every every <laughs> crappy game apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so when something like apparently. The Walking Dead comes around, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the best thing ever. After mm-hmm. playing like ten indie games that are terrible. Oh. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> I, I just hear these games and I just can't help too. but feel like they're like for furries or something <laughs> yes yeah yeah i should stop I playing can picture that <laughs> i'm right. not gonna say anything about that i'm just gonna stop <laughs> ranting i'm just gonna i can't you i can talk you can't about deny this all day <laughs> <laughs> right he's like that hush hush <laughs> <laughs>